Finally we can call it a dungeon generator, because now we have singular path but multi-direction generation. So, here is the new version of it, and there is an old version, so you can compare those two, but let's go with it together. Now we need to declare those variables before we start iterating our loop. So again, we start with transform that position, the position of the generator as the last element, and every iteration of this loop. First, we pick a random number from 0 to 4, but 4 is exclusive, so from 0 to 3, and we map it to room.directions, and as you may remember, we can use 0 as up, 3 as a left and so on. So we get the direction first. Then we use it to pick the correct offset from the offsets array, which we pass to this function. And after that, we know what is our new room position. Okay. Now we instantiate the new room as we did before. And there is something new. We check if new room has collision boolean set to true, we'll go back to this in a minute. But if we don't have it, we mark our last as a new room position. Then we say in which direction we generate. And that's it. Now let's have a look on this. In room class we have this on trigger enter 2D which just sets this collision to true. So if we spawn two rooms on top of each other, we have a collision and we set this boolean to true. It will work because we have this rich body 2D and box collider 2D. But there is something very important. After we instantiate it, we need to wait at least for the next fixed update, not just one frame. And it's very important, because otherwise it may break. Okay, but if we have a collision, we set this object inactive, because it is faster than destroying it, which we do anyway. But we make sure that this collision won't happen on the old object, because it's inactive. Then we go back with one iteration of this loop, continue this loop, so our last position is still an old value, and we try again. And we do that until we are good. So we do something like this. We spawn one room on the right, then one room up, one room right, down, and if we want to go left, we have a collision, so we go back with this position and try up, try right, try down, and so on. But we may spawn totally randomly a cage around a certain area. So if you are over there and we spawn a room on the right, we can do that. But now if we want to spawn another room, we are stuck there and we have an infinite loop. So, if we have a collision, for example, right here, let's just save the position anyway, and now start trying from this position. First, let's change the position of this line. Alright, and one more thing. As we start generating rooms, we want to set generating rooms to true. Then, as we know that the new room is good, we want to add it to rooms list and after this loop is finished we want to stop generating rooms. Ok, as you can see we have a totally random dungeon. Let's run some tests too. Save the changes. Ok, let's see. We are generating something? Okay, we have failed it. Alright, the problem was all about this line. We need to wait a little bit longer, so let's change it to 0.15.
But to fix this problem, I've also changed the name of the newly created room to room space rooms that count. So it will be something like room zero, room one, room two, and so on. I've also spotted that I don't use rooms container, so I've added it here. Commented out debug.log so we don't see it again. And also, as we spot a broken room, we want to wait a little bit so we have time to pause the test. And also send this name to the console with debug.log. Okay, so now let's run tests again. And as you can see, we have all of them green. This is generated randomly, so we should run those tests a few more times. So we make sure that it's done. To make it run faster, we may comment this line out and use this one instead. Okay, now we may be sure that it is working correctly. Now to make it look even better and to see that we are actually deleting colliding rooms, let's do something fun. Let's go to room class and do something like this. If this room component isn't on the same game object which has room generator, want to set its body color to a random color. We also want to have an animated look in our generate rooms function and comment out best performance. Maybe for now let's make it 0.6. Now we generate rooms and sometimes they color change and that's because we spawn a new room on top of them but it gets deleted as we find a collision. Alright, and now everything looks fine. Let's go back with it to point 0.2 and we may continue. Now imagine that you generate a dungeon but you have a bag. And every time you generate it again, the dungeon is different and the bug is different. So it makes it really annoying to fix it. So let's add seed to our generation. In the room generator, you need to add a boolean use seed and an integer seed. Let's say that's the value. Now to make use of it, let's go to awake and write those two simple lines. If we use seed, we want to set init state. Every time we use this number, we get the same dungeon. So now let's set it to true and go to unity. Now let's rerun it. And as you can see, it's the same. Now let's run some tests and if everything is green we are ok, let's do it again, alright, and if you have some red, it's probably in every room has a door and that means you need to add this line of code. Now let's have a look on our tests. Now we have a new test, same seed dungeons are equal. And inside we have a helper function which returns string and we have generation 1 string and generation 2 string. We set use seed to true, we load our scene again. Then as we are done with generating rooms, we set generation 1 to something that this function does. Let's leave it as it is for now. Now we reload the scene and do everything again. We find a generator and we save the generation to a string. And if those two strings are equal, we are done. We have a green test. So let's have a look on it. We get a room generator here 
we get generated rooms, we create a list of neighbors and for every generated room you get its doors, we save a neighbor, so where does a given door leads to? To this list. So you have a list of every neighbor of every room and then save it to a string separated by new line character. So it's pretty impossible to generate different dungeons but with the same neighbors. As we are here and given that this test is green, if you want to help yourself while debugging any other tests that are red, you just scroll up and here you uncomment this line of code. So if you have a problem you just use a given seed and work on the same dungeon every time you rerun those tests. And if you finally remove the bug, you should comment this line out, just like it is now, and try again with a totally different dungeon. In Unity it's gonna be like this, we need to generate one dungeon for those two, and additional two for the last one. Let's run it. Beautiful, everything is green, let's run it again. Yeah, we got it. That's pretty much everything that you will need about dungeon generation, but if you'd like to know more about pathfinding or creating bigger rooms in your dungeon, see you soon! <laughs>